this week. We have a schedule already of the events of the Tridium, or the Paschal festivities in Holy Week. We have a sheet if you would like to collect one or look at the details after the Holy Mass. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we rejoice today as the priest is wearing a rose vestment. Today is called the Sunday to rejoice, Letare Sunday. We have reached this halfway point now in the climb towards Lent, towards the end of Lent, which is the glory of the resurrection. This is the time now to increase your penances and sacrifices to put off the old man and put on the new garments of Jesus Christ towards the resurrection. We anticipate today we rejoice the resurrection of our Lord from the dead at this halfway point. The resurrection, which is the fundamental doctrine of our faith. Where would we be if there was no life after death? Would it not be all be futile as Saint Paul exhorts us in the Holy Scripture? He says, for if the dead rise not again, neither is Christ risen again. And if Christ not be risen again, your faith is in vain, for you are in your sins. If in this life we only have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, he says. But now Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of them that sleep. One of, the, one of my favorite lines in the scripture, if you know the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, always be joyful, pray constantly, and give thanks, because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This is what we focus on today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this notion of thanksgiving. We must be a people of thanksgiving in our daily lives for all the wonders and miracles of our being, our creation, and our faith. This is the thanksgiving which is the Holy Eucharist, which the Lord alludes to today on the mountain in the Holy Gospel. The sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, is called the source and the summit of our Catholic lives. St. Thomas Aquinas, great doctor of the church, says this is the sacrament of sacraments. We prostrate ourselves today before this mystery of mysteries. We know in the scripture also, St. John chapter six unpacks the mystery when our Lord declares a number of times and also in verse 51, he says, I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. We know St. John's gospel does not contain in itself, unlike Matthew, Mark, Matthew Luke, and Mark and the Acts of the Apostles, the institution of the Eucharist, the Last Supper rite, but today we have in John this, this uh, alluding to the institution of the Eucharist with the feeding of the 5,000 on the mountain with five barley loaves and two fish. When Jesus gives thanks and distributes himself to the people, pointing to this institution. The people on the mountain in the gospel, however, are interested only in natural food. They have seen our Lord in this discourse, healing many people, chasing out many devils, and they are interested only in the natural. They're interested in to be fed. But after the miracle of the loaves, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who has come into the world. They now see Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Jesus then withdraws to the mountain to avoid himself being proclaimed king according to the desires, their desires and their instructions. The church faces the same temptation today and now to be a church not willed by the Father by accepting what the world wants it to be and do. This is where we live now, where people try to impose their views on what the Catholic Church should be. The world then wants the Catholic Church we have this expression in the world to get with the program. 
to change. Today, what can we say about the mystery of our awesome faith, the Holy Eucharist? Who amongst us few here could think it possible that Jesus Christ, out of his love for you and me, for all creatures, would have gone so far as to nourish our souls with his adorable body and precious blood, unless he himself assured us of this truth. Behold of what love of God has for his creature and is capable. Of all the sacraments, there is none to compare with the Holy Eucharist. Holy Communion, we know, unites us intimately with Jesus Christ. This union is so intimate that Jesus Christ himself says, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood abideth in me and I in him. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Consequently, upon receiving this sacrament of sacraments, Holy Communion, the adorable blood of Jesus Christ flows really in our veins. His flesh is really blended with ours, and for this reason, St. Paul says, it is I, it is not I who acts and thinks, but Jesus Christ acts and thinks in me. I do not live, he says, but Christ liveth in me. Holy Communion is the pledge for us then of eternal life. That to say, Holy Communion endows us with the expectation of heaven and with an assurance that heaven one day will be our home in this valley of tears now. Jesus Christ will cause our bodies at the resurrection to appear the more glorious, the oftener we have received him worthily in this sacrament. So then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, be a people of the Holy Eucharist, a people of thanksgiving, a people of faith, and a people who rejoice and with joy. We also notice a line in this verse in the gospel. It says, Jesus Christ said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain lest they be lost. Gather up the fragments that remain that they not be lost, lest they not be lost. Can we apply this then to the indult to allow the faithful to receive Holy Communion today in the hand. We know that the universal norm of the Roman Catholic Church, a norm which has been in place for century after century, is to receive Jesus Christ on our knees, if physically possible, and on the tongue. This was reinforced again by a document of the Magisterium called Memorial Domini, the, instruct, the instruction on the manner of administering Holy Communion issued by the Congregation for Divine Worship, May the 29th, 1969. And this norm has never ever been revoked. The indult states, the universal law of the church is to receive Holy Communion directly on the tongue. The chief concern is noticed in the indult in extending permission to the faithful to receive Holy Communion in the hand is the danger of a loss of reverence, a profanation of adultery of the true doctrine. The church's preference for communion on the tongue is nearly always justified by the notions of reverence, devotion, humility, adoration, respect, and decorum. And while Pope John Paul II acknowledges those who receive the Lord in the hand, do so with profound reverence and devotion. Permission for communion in the hand is accompanied by warnings of potential disrespect, profanation, weakening of Eucharistic faith, and indifference. We have to remember that the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we call it thus, not, is not just a meal, it is Calvary. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is a representation of Christ's sacrifice at Golgotha and requires reception of holy communion on the tongue. Why does the minister then, we ask this important question, perhaps you don't know this, I only found out about this, pondered on this a few months ago, why does the minister in the baptismal rite, in the extraordinary form, which has many exorcisms, why does he place salt and bless the tongue of the little child? Why? Because this is the throne on which to receive the Lord 
in the life of the child. He does not bless the palms of the hand. Going back to the fragments, experiments have been made with black gloves and white light to identify if remnant fragments are visible on the hand of the communicants. This proved that fragments, although perhaps not visible sometimes to the human eye, are remaining even as fine dust. If you are observant of the priest in Persona Christi in the Holy Mass of the Ages, as today, from the point of the consecration, you will notice that the priest picks up the host, and from that moment he must keep custody of his fingers, his forefinger and his thumb, because these might contain the fragments of our Lord. The most important part, probably, of the anatomy of the priest in Persona Christi is his thumb. Why? Because if you have a priest without his thumb, it's very difficult to keep his finger, his forefinger and his thumb custodian of the fragments. This is what the priest has to do in the rubrics of the Holy Mass. The priest also breaks the sacred host at some point in half. At that point, fragments become visible and we have to be attentive, the priest, because sometimes the fragments jump about even on the corporal. Then the priest runs his fingers down one seam of the host to release the fragments. And then, if you know the rubrics of the mass, the priest also has to use the plate or the pattern to scrape up the dust-like fragments of the corporal. There's always fragments in the Holy Mass, in the consecration, and from this point. Priests also, when we are trying to collect the fragments, we were told in the seminary to make a prayer, to make a prayer at this point to the holy angels, to pray a prayer that if we have been, if we are missing any fragments, then we ask the holy angels to gather around and collect the fragments and put them into the chalice beautiful prayer, lest any fragments be lost. Look at where we have arrived then in the last 50 years. Many believe that communion on the hand is now the norm and on the tongue is the exception, the reverse. We even have the clergy denying the faithful the right to receive as they choose with reverence, kneeling and on the tongue. This is an abuse here. Is the irony then the clergy will charge disobedience to the communicant, yet he, the clergy, is in disobedience first to the universal norm. It is not for the priest to impose or compel the faithful how to receive. These are norms to follow. Look at the incalculable number of lost and trampled upon fragments in these years the incalculable number of lost and trampled on fragments in these last 50 years. Remember, each fragment, or each dust fragment, no matter how small, is the whole body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. How have we treated life itself, Jesus Christ, in such a casual manner? Such disregard and irreverence. Has this not led in the same period, the same time period, to such a trampling upon and disregard of the dignity of life itself as we consign the fragments of an incalculable number of unborn babies to the medicinal dustbins in the same period? Is it a sheer coincidence that the destruction in the womb has coincided with communion in the hand? Ah, uh, now we, to compound this evil, we see the manufacture of medicines and vaccines using again these fragments of the children. Do we not, do not lose hope, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and despair in these times, esteem the reception of Holy Communion on the tongue to bring back the right reverence due to the Holy Eucharist and help the faithful understand and believe in the true presence of Christ. This is the time we live in now. We see all the consequences of the sin in the world 
But what is the root cause? The root cause is the loss of faith in Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. This is where we are now, so we need the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Esteem the Holy Eucharist as Our Lady did. Our Lady is the key for us to move forward. Our Lady's quiet adoration of Christ at the foot of the cross is the example how we can adore our Lord's sacrifice with the proper disposition. Saint Peter Julian Amard, great apostle of the Eucharist, says, where on earth shall we find Jesus but in the arms of Mary? Was she not the one who gave us the Eucharist? It was her consent to the incarnation of the Word that inaugurated the great mystery of reparation to God and union with us, which Jesus Christ accomplished during his mortal life, and that continues every moment in the Eucharist. Without Mary, we shall never find Jesus Christ, for she possesses him in her heart. There he takes his delight, and those who wish to know his inmost virtues, to experience the privilege of his intimate love, must seek then first Mary. We only can only go to him through her. The more we love the Eucharist, then it follows the more we love Mary. Do the most reverent and noble action then. Always receive Holy Communion in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Thank the Blessed Virgin Mary, because as many mystics tell us, Jesus Christ instituted the Most Holy Eucharist principally, first for the Blessed Virgin Mary. After his death and ascension, he could not bear to be apart from his most sweet and beautiful mother. So we ask Mary today on this Laetare Sunday, this Sunday of joy where we rejoice, we ask her to bring back our faith in the Blessed Sacrament and to always allow us to receive her beloved Son with her prostrated heart and our tongue for a throne. This is how we adore Jesus Christ through Mary, so that one day we can thank the Holy Trinity for allowing us to partake in this bread of heaven. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, be, let, be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.